Hello, Lothar here. Uh, this video is one that was requested by a number of people and some also some friends and family back in England about some of the, the new tools uh, and equipment that are available for uh, hiking in snow and ice. Now, I'm, I've covered some of this in previous videos, but this one is really going to focus on specifically um, uh, the tools that I would use when crossing snow and ice and kind of the argument for, for the Whippet or the Ice Axe, um, uh, which is an ongoing debate. Um, that is in the community whereby whippets um, are not fully specced ice axes and therefore shall not be used and other other people take the view that a whippet tool which is an ice axe on a trekking pole uh, even though it's not specced as an ice axe the fact it's in your hand that has an aspect of additional safety because it's in your hand at all times there are arguments for both so I'm gonna present mine so uh, I just give my way of background I am age 55 um, my first use of an ice axe was when I was about 16, 17 um, and I was very lucky to have training on self-arrest, self-belay, um, roping up with colleagues um, using ice axe uh, not only to save myself uh, but also uh, to save my partner on the other end of the rope should it be needed um, and situations where we were using full spec ice axes. Um, we would, uh, I spent a lot of time in um, Scotland, so I did probably about five or six years doing Munro bagging, which is in the mountains um, above certain heights. Um, but uh, in Scotland, when you have Scottish winter, then it's it's a bad it's bad weather. It's seriously bad weather. So that was a great experience there. I then had um, uh, training courses in France. I had training courses in Austria. And I had a training course um, back again in France. I think in total I've had about four. Uh, four courses, uh, five courses, no, because it was a refresher, five courses of different, uh, from different um, international uh, organisations whereby they just teach you how to use an ice axe um, and how to traverse snow fields and just basically practice and maybe looking after people uh, on trail uh, when traversing snow and ice. So the main pieces of equipment you'll hear talked about are footwear, um, traction devices that go on that footwear and then self-arrest tools like an ice axe or a whippet which I'll talk, talk about in a minute. So the first, um, when I was growing up, we we wore traditional footwear like boots. Now this is a modern version, this is probably intermediate. But we, we were using solid boots, they're rigid boots, you could cut a, you know, dig a step into the snow if you needed it. This is what I was your, when I was growing up, these are the kinds of things, albeit as I said, a leather version of these. Uh, and then I would combine that with uh, a set of crampons, where the, the crampons might be uh, basically spikes on the shoes. And the crampons would, would, would actually extend quite, quite a way off underneath the shoe to give you traction in ice. Um, and the other thing I would use was a trekking pot, uh, was a, would be an ice axe. Now, an ice axe, because I was trekking, we actually used longer full length ice axes, which were trekking pole, trekking ice axes, sorry. So they're full length, they're longer, such that you could stand up straight, put your hand down, and actually use the length of the ice axe as, albeit a walking stick or makeshift trekking pole. So when I was starting um, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, um, we trekking poles weren't, weren't commonly used, um, very rarely. I never, I never saw them. We normally just have one stick or, or, a, uh, or ice axe, trekking ice axe, as a stability. Um, and that was actually quite good because it also meant that your second hand would be, always be free such that whenever you had to do an arrest and if your ice axe is on this hand you can then bring your hand over and if you see techniques of how to use an ice axe you actually need to have both hands on the ice axe head to bury it into the snow using your full weight and full control. So that's what I did 30 years ago and over the process of uh, many years leading up to today what am i using now well i'm using like everybody else on the trail of pct trail runners things like this which are i think considered by most um, search and rescue mountaineering uh, schools um, these aren't suitable for going traversing uh, snow and ice and um, going certainly going out mount whitney but we all use them so we've gone from heavy boots to things that can't cut, can't cut snow, can't cut steps in snow. Traction may be compromised. There's not deep tread here. Um, this is the norm at the moment. Uh, I'm guilty of it too. I use them. Uh, other thing you'll see are micro spikes. Now these are basically a shorter version of crampons. Though. Um, so, but predominantly these are used. Uh, so you're compromising a little bit on the fact that you've got traction, but the traction isn't going deep into the ice or snow. But these, these are what are commonly used. And then traditionally people would use uh, today an ice axe, they carry an ice axe. Now the problem with an ice axe is, um, as I said before, I had a full trekking ice axe full length. So actually I didn't mind having it in my hand at all times because it gave me stability. But we're now in a situation where people use um, trekking poles. And so 
uh, they're much more happy using trekking poles going across snow and ice certainly at the low level um, and uh, not necessarily taking an ice axe and actually having it um, as they traverse a snowfield. Now, so the problem there is, is if you're faced with a snowfield, say, say that sort of slope, you've got a choice. You either stick with your trekking poles or you put your trekking poles away and pull your ice axe out and use your ice axe uh, digging into the higher level of the, uh, the high side of the snow and you traverse across and you keep this hand free. But people don't tend to do that. What they do is they put the ice axe in and they use this hand with the trekking pole again. And they use the trekking pole to jam their foot against the trekking pole to stop the side. Now you could argue that's a bit of a mishmash, but is that safe or not? I probably would disagree because you then compromise this hand because you, if you slip, you need to have that second hand free to go onto the ice axe. So all the techniques of all these new tools coming in are actually compromising the very training that you should have with an ice axe. So an ice axe, when you're traversing, you should actually put all your trekking poles away and have the ice axe in one hand going across, going across, giving you stability on the high, slope, high side of the slope. So if you slip, you can have the second hand bring your hand across. Uh, but people don't do that. So um, I was kind of thinking many years ago, what, what would be the ideal tool when I was um, going across snow and ice and trekking? And I would have loved to have an ice axe, a full spec ice axe, that would go in, could lock into two modes. A trekking mode, full length, full strength, or ice axe mode, shorter, by just literally clips in, um, and it's just a locked in, and it's just a normal spec ice axe. Um, and the reason why I was attracted to tools like the Whippet is because that's kind of what it is. It's not a fully spec ice axe. Uh, I kind of wish that Black Diamond, who make these, and I think there are other companies that make uh, attraction tools like this, or they're just you know, bringing them into the market for skiing and things like this. I really wish they would bring out. You know, spec this at a full, you know, give it to full self arrest strength, if you like, and have uh, maybe a two mechanism locking pole. Um, uh, well, the thing is, is, actually, the whippet actually you can you can extend to any length. So you could argue that this is is this as strong as an ice axe? No, it's not. But the, I was actually thinking, where would I use an ice axe on the PCT? Well, the PCT I would want to use an ice axe at the at the near top of um, uh, slopes where it's maybe forest to pass where you've got that chute where you, you cross and if you slip you're going to, going to go down the chute you need to have an arrest you need to arrest really quick but i also want a tool that's going to do all the 99 percent of all the approaches the slopes like that so uh, it takes out any questions about the fact that do i take the ice axe off or not it's not perfect i might i might come to a snowfield that walk across it and think oh that's all right i don't need an ice axe uh, and that happens an awful lot and if, if, if you say it doesn't happen Go out and watch what people do. It happens an incredible amount where you, you don't have a full slope which would warrant necessarily a full ice axe, but you probably want an arrest tool of some kind just to stop you from sliding if something the unexpected happens. Um, so when I come to Forrester Pass or anywhere where I think I you know, this is very high risk of, of slipping, I would set this, or I'd use an ice axe, or I would set this at a fixed length and I would probably rehearse if my left foot slid this way, I would, okay, I would, I would turn this way. I'm actually, I'm actually poised, fully expecting that my traction might go. The reason why this is useful away from those, those situations is, is for the situations where you're walking along, walking along, and then whoosh, slip. You have no warning of that slip coming. In all the dangerous, you know you're at risk, so you're, you're poised. You're already pre-prepped to do an arrest. This tool comes into use when you're just you're nonchalantly going along and you said, whoa, I'm like, what the hell happened there? And off you go down the slope, albeit not a super, super dangerous one. But you actually, as you're going along, you can build up speed. And if you can't arrest, you can actually do some, you can do some serious damage. This is why I like this tool, because it's actually a trekking pole, which I wouldn't have it all, at all times in my hand when I'm on the, on, the, on the low to medium, intermediate slopes. And also an arrest tool uh, that gives me the comfort, the comfort to know that if I do have a slide, unexpectedly, this is in my hand, so it's just there. I didn't have to think about taking it off. So that is where I kind of really hope in the, in the next couple of years, Black Diamond make this stronger. So it kind of removes the argument, the fair argument, that this is not a fully spec ice axe. And that's a very fair argument. Is it a compromised tool? Yes. Is it a tool fit for purpose for me personally? In low to medium snow years, I think for me, I would use it again in the same way that I would compromise my safety by using micro spikes. And I, again, I would fully accept the fact I'm compromising my safety because I'd be using trail runners. This gives me confidence, not just at the top, uh, the height, the, the dangerous bits, 
the super dangerous bits because I know I'm poised, ready to go. This gives me the confidence of the 99.9% when I'm not ready, and that I'm still crossing snow and ice because it's always in my hand. Now, I love the fact that this new one has this ability to take the ice axe head away from the pole. So if you don't need it, you can still trek with it. Uh, it's a trekking pole. So again, it's added safety because having an ice axe in your hand of any kind, of any description, um, it's dangerous. You, you can actually stab yourselves here, 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 you know, if you stumble. This is, you, you could argue, well, wait, if you have it in your hand more, then you're going to, you know, you have more risk of damaging yourself. Well, actually, I'd much rather do that because it's, gonna, it's still an arrest tool that I need it and it's always in my hand at the time I need it. Um, but yeah, I accept the risks. Uh, and when you're hiking, you, you, there are protective uh, tools like this, which is basically a, uh, a tool that goes across and protects um, the, uh, the, the sharp bits of the axe. But um, it's a tough one because I was also thinking if I was in a snow year, a high snow year coming into the PCT, what would I do? If it was a high snow year and it was very clear that there was a lot of ice at the top, I'd actually probably send my a, a variant of boots like this, this give me rigidity to Kennedy Meadows South uh, if I was going northbound. I'd also probably send full crampons, uh, albeit trekking crampons, which gives me extra length and traction. I would also take an ice axe and a whip it because the ice axe still doesn't solve the problem of the ma massive lengths of snow and ice on the approaches. So I would actually have then the option, of tr if it's really high snow year, lots of snows, I would then have the choice of two um, uh, traction devices. One that I'm going to use 95% of the time when I'm trekking on the approaches to the dangerous bits. And if it's really compromised, I would then have, I'd actually potentially have the option of having two traction uh, basic traction devices now ideally you you want to if, if you're into mountaineering you'll see these people go, go across ice but do you, you don't get that on the pct it's, as i said the only extreme situations where i would take an ice axe and a whip it would be in those you know, if, if, the, if the reports are the ice is just you know you know, walls of ice that is where i want the, the, the both the tools um i would probably switch if i was in a situation where i was going across very hard ice you have, to, you have to jam the crampons into this into the ice just to get across that is where you want i'd probably have the full strength ice axe um because you know that's that's where the ice could actually break away and then you're going to slide down and you've got to jam the ice axe into ice or rock underneath that and that's where you need the full strength ice axe in slow to low to medium medium snow i think because i'm poised to use this I think this for me personally is full and sufficient. Um, I really hope Black Diamond bring out a version which is fully spec'd and then that would kind of remove any of the doubts um, that people might have. Um, uh, I fully respect the fact that people should say ice axe, ice axe, ice axe. I fully respect that. But I probably can count, I would counter that argument slightly in the fact that I was a former academic instructor and also uh, I trained as a dive instructor, um, and just, just more for personal interest, but through those, that training, quite, it's quite um, an emphasis on obviously teaching the right techniques, teaching the right safety, um, but also you're observing, you're taught to observe students and what they do, and you know, if there's any situations where the vast majority of people start doing a thing, a technique, you know, or, or you're not rebelling against a technique, but having a real trouble with a particular technique, and it may just be you might need to feedback to the industry or feedback to the standards agencies, you know, this this isn't working very well. How can we how can we how can we deal with it? So if we know that people aren't using ice axes when they should, and this is uh, after 30 years, I still don't take an ice axe off when I should um, off my backpack and use it because I'm lazy. Um, I don't put mic spikes on because I think, oh, I can get past that. And, and that, is, that is human nature. So um, if you sit on the path, top of a pass um, on the PCT and you've got a quiet day and just watch what people do, I think it's this mixture of trekking pole and ice axe, not, not having two hands free, that's that's the reality of it. Um, how do you how do you enforce that? How do you you know impress on the fact that your safety requires the proper technique? Um, you have to rely on people to do the right thing. And if you're if you're realising that uh, on the low slopes people aren't doing the right thing, um, there may be tools that will uh, be um, coming onto the market which would help address that. So for example, the Whippet was originally designed for skiers. It's not a full arrest tool, but it is a, an arrest ski pole um, uh, such that they can stop if they slide uh, on, a, on a particular slope. But hikers and trekkers are starting to adopt them. Um, and you might ask yourself, why? Well, the very good reason is because it's a trekking pole, which is means it's always in your hand at all times. Uh, it's adjustable in height, which is comes into the play with the fact that it's, it could be a two-adjust, you know, trekking uh, height uh, ice axe. 
and a, a proper length ice axe. Um, and it's there in your hand all the time and it's not a, a burden, not an additional burden. So you're faced with the challenge is, is that how do you bring these tools into more acceptance? In the same way as 30 years ago, no one would accept these as acceptable in mountains and certainly not go that way. Nobody would. This, these are totally unacceptable from a safety point of view. Mountain rescue would just rip you to shreds in terms of if, you, if they got called out and you're wearing these. Um, in the same way, they might moan a bit a little bit. They like the fact you've got microspikes, but they really moan about, you know, they'd probably say crampons would be better. Um, having a tool like this um, fully specced, I think the, the, the community will start accepting these kind of tools more. And I think, and I hope they do, because I, I personally think the idea of having it in your hand, an excuse to have it in your hand, and wanting to have it in your hand at all times, is a real aspect, key aspect, of it actually being used at the right time. And ice axes currently don't, well, for the last 30 years, haven't, haven't solved that problem. So, um, certainly for trekking anyway. Uh, I hope this is helpful. I appreciate it's a, it's a topic that is... Um, there are both camps. Uh, you know, if, you, if you take 100% safety, 100% safety, then you should be advocating shoes, advocating uh, full-length crampons and full ice axe. Good luck with that because most PCT hikers have already thrown away the compromise with this. They accept, they've accepted this. They are going with micro spikes, and I have to say, me included, I'm accepting my own risk. Um, is a whippet going too risky? Some people might say yes. Um, I think mountain community and instructors are starting to realise it's a tool that, if it evolves better, it could it could become a it could become very widely used, um, not for mountaineering but for trekking. Um, so um, anyway, hope this is useful. I'm sure it's going to prompt debate. Uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But uh, I would use whip it again. And I was thinking if I was ever in very extreme conditions, um, I would if, if it was a very high snow yet lots of snow and ice. I would, as I said, take boots, full length crampons, I take an ice axe and a whip it because my trekking would require that I have a trekking pole. Um, and I'd use that on the low slopes. And when it comes to really serious, if, it's, if I was really concerned, I might even turn back if I was that seriously concerned, or I'd use a solid ice axe. But um, it would be, there have to be extreme conditions there for me to swap out from the whip it at the moment. But uh, anyway, hope that's helpful. Um, speak to you soon.